Hello and welcome to the Longevity Learning Lab. Today we're going to take a look at the TIGWELD 200EX and some of the variations that we can make using the pulse frequency setting. So we're going to take a look at some aluminum welding today. So I set the machine on AC and set the AC frequency to 60 Hz. I set the amperage to about 125 amps. And I set the AC balance to 30%. So when I made the first weld here, I didn't use the pulser at all. I just had the straight AC current with no pulse, and the only ripples I got in the bead were from the rhythmic additions of the filler metal that I put in by hand. So I laid one bead down along the edge of the plate here, making sure that it didn't roll over the edge there, also, with a piece of aluminum like this, we need to remember the thermal conductivity and the fact that the material will warm up as we're working down the plate. So as we work our way down, we're going to have to back off the foot pedal and decrease the amount of amperage, and then taper out right there at the end. So now, I went ahead and set the machine up for the pulser. So I set the pulse width to 60 and I went ahead and set the background base current to 50 amps and I set the pulse frequency to 2 Hertz and made another weld and so that's the weld at a pulse rate of 2 then I adjusted the machine to a pulse rate of 4 and then went ahead and made one of the welds using the pulse rate of 4 so once again trying to keep the bead even. As I place each bead down, I try to use the edge, or what we call the toe, of the previous weld as the center line for the next bead. The pulser will help even out the ripples in the bead, even though there might be small variations in the amount of filler that I add each time but I should be trying to add just the same amount of filler each time. I want to make sure that I keep a nice even travel speed, keep a nice short arc length, and watch the puddle and make sure that it's full and complete. So there's the third pass done at four pulses per second. So then I went and set the machine at five pulses per second and went ahead and made another weld. So once again, same thing trying to keep the bead centered on the edge of the previous weld very rhythmically adding the filler metal in again and again and again one of the things that's not too noticeable in the video here is is I'm not just tapping the filler metal up and down like a drumstick on a drum you actually have to push the filler rod forward and feed it into the fill into the puddle itself especially on aluminum we have to add a significant amount of filler to keep it full and then taper out at the end there make sure that we don't want to have any crater cracks or anything like that so there's a take a peek at the finished weld there so then I went ahead and increased the pulse rate to six pulses per second on the frequency so then I went ahead and made another weld. Once again, you can see the flicker of the light as the pulse increases. There gets a point sometime, somewhere around 8, 9, 10 pulses per second, when it very becomes uh, problematic looking at it for long periods of time. So making one or two beads uh, won't, won't, hurt our, won't hurt ourselves or bother us. Uh, but there's a one pulse rate right in there about 8, 9, 10, 12 pulses per second that if you've got to do that all day, I'll guarantee that you'll have a headache by the end of your shift. So I usually try to keep the pulse rate down less than that, but I wanted to do this video here to give you an example of what the different pulse rates look like. So once again, nice even beads. So increase the pulse rate to 7 Hertz or seven pulses per second and made another bead. So that's like I'm saying, this is right about in that range right in here at about 
7 to 12, uh, where that flicker just becomes uh, real bothersome to our eye when we have it on the welding hood and we're trying to do it for an extended period of time. So, like I said in the last pass, I try to uh, keep it down lower, maybe about 2 to 4, something like that seems to work real well for me. Uh, but everybody's a little bit different, and you need to find what works best for you. So, once again, we don't want to just leave a big divot there at the end. We want to taper off the puddle. Don't just sit there, kind of run to the side or run off the edge of the bead. So there's another uh, look at the finished welds. Really good looking welds. Increase the pulse to eight pulses per second here. And now we're going to make another pass. Once again, centered on the previous bead, trying to make sure that we add just enough filler metal so that each bead has roughly the same height on the plate here. So I'm adding probably anywhere between a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch in thickness uh, with each bead here uh, building up the surface of the plate. So uh, sometimes we have to build it up much more than this, but this for this example I just was putting one pass across the surface of the plate here. And once again, at the end, we don't want to just stop. We want to taper off, add any filler metal that we need right there at the end, and make sure that we don't leave a big crater or any crater cracks. Another shot at the completed weld. Getting close to being done here. So now we've turned the frequency up to 9 hertz, or 9 pulses per second. And we're going to make one more weld here. we got two to go. This one is 9, and then the last one we'll make down the edge will be 10 pulses per second. So you can see as the pulse rate increases, the pulsation itself uh, becomes quite a bit less. Uh, the other thing is, is the because the plate's getting warmer and warmer, uh, I'm not letting it cool off too much between pass here, maybe a minute or two in between passes. Uh, so the amount of amperage required as I go along here isn't quite as much as I needed on those first few passes. Once again, thermal conductivity in aluminum is very high, so the whole piece is getting warm, not just the location right where the weld is at. Once again, we want to taper off. Don't leave a crater crack or a puddle unfilled there. So we got one pass left to go. Okay, so I turn the machine up to 10 pulses per second, and then we're going to make the last pass down the side of this plate here. Okay, we also have to make sure on that edge there uh, that it doesn't get too hot and spill over the edge. Or uh, So we want to, once again, make sure that we add just enough filler metal to keep it full. Uh, not seeing much pulse here because I don't have my foot down on the pedal very much. Keep adding the filler metal in very rhythmically on a regular basis. Keep the tip of the rod in the center of the pool. Add it in and out of the pool of liquid, not touching the plate ahead and sliding it in, in and out of the liquid, and keeping it in that stream of gas, right down to the very edge there. It's getting really hot, I'm trying to keep it from pouring over the edge, so I had to slow down a little bit there and back off the pedal, and then fill it up right there at the very end and then taper off. So the completed weld looks something like this. Thanks for hanging out and we hope to see you again real soon.